The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation. This is Jared Robinson, not Mike Campion, but Mike Campion is with me today. So I'm going to be hosting the podcast today for one particular reason. And that reason is, um, as we were discussing what we're going to be talking about, one of the questions and, and offers that we do make is to be able to work remotely from your cleaning company. And I said to him, hey, what is the logistics of that? What does that look like? And we said, well, this would make a great podcast episode. So we kind of switched roles today, but I'll uh, do a quick introduction of Mike. Mike is uh, living in Arizona. It, he, it's 114 degrees there today. Actually, I, that might be yesterday that it was 114, but hot day nonetheless. And he is uh, helping owners of cleaning companies grow. So happy to have him on his own podcast. Uh, Mike, say hi to everyone for us. Happy to be here, Jared. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me on today. Very thoughtful of you. I'll try not to curse. Right on. So let's jump into this in today's subject. So one of the things that we, as we've been, you know, looking at what we can provide for owners of clean companies, one of the things that we promote is the ability to work remote. Now, Mike, your company is remote. You currently have employees and people who work for you who are all remote based. What is kind of the, I guess, the difference between what you do working remotely and, and having that remote base and what a cleaning company will need to do to be able to work remote as well? Really good question. And to vouch for what Jared's saying, I'm currently, as he mentioned, Scottsdale, Arizona at 100 and, you know, 10, 15 degrees, depending on where you're at. Jared is bragging he's in Mexico City and it is uh, 70 degrees. So thank you very little for that little tidbit, Jared, enjoying life. Well, some of us are sweating out here. No worries. Um, yeah. So I'd owned companies before um, that were did not lend themselves to one remotely. So this one lends itself to remotely because our customers are all over the world, our employees are all over the world. So it just kind of makes sense that we run it remotely. Um, but my last brick and mortar was a car dealership, which obviously I shouldn't say obviously, but that's you know got some sort of physicality to it. Like a human right. being needs to be in a place with the car at some point. Uh, although Tesla has done a pretty good job of. Uh, being fairly remote, but sure. we are not. We were not Tesla. I can assure you, we did well, but not uh, not Elon Musk well by any stretch. And before that, I had a construction company. Uh, again, very physical. You got to, and we fabricated, and installed large, complex steel and fabric uh, systems. So very hands on. Just because it's a very a really good point, Jared. If I'm them, I'm like, well, yeah, easy for you to say, tough guy. You do a freaking coaching business that lends itself to being remote. I clean, like, what, what are you talking about? So right. first thing I want to say is you can be remote. That does not mean your people, you know, obviously if you have a construction company, a cleaning company or a car dealership, somebody is going to have to be there. The point I'm making is you as the owner do not have to be there. Um, so let's start with that foundation. Did I answer your question or did I completely skirt it? No, I think this, this is great. Yeah. So I guess where we go with this is like, yeah, your construction business, you're like, well, I can't. Your car dealership business, you say, well, I can't. And I can imagine cleaning company owners saying, well, I can't. So tell me why they can. So the cool thing is, this is almost like kind of a feature of what we already, it's not a separate thing. So the reason we kind of use it in the marketing, because I think it is exciting for people, but in the training, there is no like module on how to run it remotely. There's just, if you do the things that we teach you to do naturally, an automatic byproduct of that is that you can pretty much do that for any in the world. So the, there's a lot of pieces to our system that tie into this. And I'll do the best I can to kind of give a, as, as deep as a view as I can in the time that we have. So first and foremost, core values, core values, core values, core values. So this company, which happens to be run remotely, but we do three live events per year. And I never have any concerns about like, oh, I can't leave Jared alone with a client or I can't leave Jared alone. Although at the last event we we're at, try to kill a chick. And, uh, you know, thank God that that didn't happen. Yep. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> my wife had a friend over and she was telling your story of a lady passed out in front of Jared, an employee of the hotel. And there's another employee of the hotel there that just took off. <laughs> and Jared's like, I don't really know what to do here and hung out. Spent the, yeah. I'll, I'll let you give a brief version. And then yeah. We'll I mean, she had a seizure. Yeah, yeah. She had a seizure. And so it was, that's a dramatic episode. It's 
to, to be in an, I mean, I was just checking in and there, you know, so you thought, <laughs> right. And the counters are there and there was two people behind the counter. One of them starts to seize and falls over the other one bailed. And so <laughs> I had to jump over the counter and kind of be with her during her seizure and make sure that paramedics came and that she was cared for. It was a strange experience. So that's, that's how our live events go. Uh, <laughs> all that to say, when Jared's not saving lives, I don't have to worry about, well, Jared, here's what to say. Like, we've never had a pre-event training on, okay, guys, we're usually virtual, but now that we're going to be in person, here's how I need you to behave. Or here's, because we all are here to have fun, make money, be real and help out. So because we all kind of own these core values and, and I believe do them in our real lives, or I shouldn't say real lives, but our non-business lives, I don't have to coach Jared how to be a good guy. Like, again, that he did what I would have not that this is a business thing, but of course he's going to go help the woman because help out is who he is. Like I wouldn't have to tell him that. like, and obviously that wasn't a, a client, but if it was, he would have done the same thing, not because of the circumstance or this is a paying client because that's who he is. So if you don't have the core values, I would find it very, very difficult because the inmates will turn on you and start running the asylum. Second, um, weekly meetings, monthly parties, quarterly reviews. Um, you just kind of have to have certain touch points. Like we all internally meet weekly. We're actually going to meet here in an hour, whatever it is. Um, we don't do our monthly parties, but if we were in person, we would absolutely do our monthly parties. That's one of the things that we have to do without it. But because we spend so much time with each other and our clients kind of online and because we're all apart, we don't do monthly parties, but, um, you guys are local. So you can actually have a benefit that I don't have and that you can do monthly parties. And then I'm lazy. I probably should do quarterly reviews. We do not, which is terrible of me. Um, but again, this is for generally your cleaners are going to be, you know, 80 to 95% of your team. So those people, I would probably do a little more. They need a little more love. Like Jared's pretty self-sufficient. Um, he doesn't need a lot of hand-holding. Uh, and I think he enjoys the camaraderie in the meetings and things like that. But I don't know that he's requires that to, he gets paid a good wage. He does a good job. If I said, hey, Jared, I need you to make, you know, 18 bucks an hour and clean toilets all day. Probably wouldn't take the job. If he did, he would probably need a little more community. <laughs> it would have to be ratcheted up. It would have to be some non-financial benefit. So step one is you got to have your core values uh, and you can't beat people into submission. You have to hire people that already have that and then encourage them to do that. And then the day-to-day, day-to-day would be weekly meetings, monthly parties, quarterly reviews. And you're like, well, hold on. That's you know not from really anywhere in the world if I got to do this weekly meeting. Um, you don't, if I'm in my rule for weekly, weekly meeting would be, um, if I'm in town, I'm going to physically be there. And if I'm not in town, I'm going to have my customer happiness manager run it for me. Um, the monthly parties, I probably would travel for those. Not that you have to, but I just think it's important when you're, you have such a light touch. So technically, I guess you'd want to, I wouldn't say have to, but you'd, I'd highly recommend that once a month you fly back and be with your people and hug and see and do real life things. And then the quarterly reviews, um, same thing. If you're in town, I would absolutely do them personally. But if you're not in town, I think the way Jared, you know, Zoom is is completely fine. But again, I never can I can't tell if I answered your question. Just talked a lot and missed it. No, no, this is this is really helpful. I I do have a, a question to add on to this though. So let's because yeah, one of the main questions I have is like, well, what if something catches on fire? What if you know, which as a business owner, that kind of stuff happens, um, and it feels like you've kind of spoken to the fact of like, you have a happiness manager who's there. You have people who are there that you can communicate with and it shouldn't be you that's jumping into the client's home, for example. But what about like commercial, you know, can a commercial cleaner have that luxury of really feeling like they can be in a remote spot? Yeah. I'm so glad that you're, you're asking that because that's, I think that's a real fear that people have of what if the building catches on fire is like the typical, or what if something terrible happens? Well, the reality is, and this is, I'm so glad you asked this, Jared, because this is probably the point. The core values are key. Um, the weekly weekly meetings, monthly parties, quarterly reviews are key, but your mindset as an owner has got to change from, I am the fountainhead of solutions, which is going to keep you trapped forever, to I'm the facilitator of other good people who are the fountainhead of solutions. So as long as I believe Jared is dumb, I am smart, even at his job, then it's going to be a lot of, well, hold on, Jared, let me micro. Did you do that? I didn't tell you, you better call and you're too dumb. And Jared will either quit or learn pretty quickly. Oh, I get in trouble or I get a negative response when I do this. So I just, I get paid to think, but thinking is hard. Michael just do the thinking. So he'll just either again, quit probably, or um, become, you know, learned helplessness. Hey, Mike, I've got, you know, what do I do? How do I do? What do I do? Which can feel great for the ego boost 
until that's until it's you know <laughs> I'm assuming like drugs they feel great the first time, but then when you can't get off, it's not great. So it feels great for Jared to call and use my big brain, and I get to show how smart I am and solve a problem that if I had the right guy and the right core values and the right support, he would have solved better on his own. But I feel good about it. But then you're now addicted to it, and it can work for two or three team members, but when you have thirty or forty, it's impossible. So the answer to that question, Jared, is I'd, I would shift from I'm the fountainhead of all wisdom and knowledge to I build a team that's the fountainhead of all wisdom and knowledge. So say there's a commercial cleaner on site and they, um, again, perfect example, and this was not a client issue, but even if it was when that lady had passed out, Jared wouldn't have called me. I'm not a freaking medic. What would he, what would I do if he did? Like tell him to do, well, are you with her? Did you call mine? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm doing what I can. I call. Okay. <laughs> talking to me, he's just making this worse. Like he, he knew what to do. He knew he was, and again, again, this is kind of a non-work thing. It just happened to be work adjacent. But had it been, if I wasn't in the room and this happened to a, a client where it would have been work adjacent, I don't think calling Mike would have even been on his thing because he's like, I know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'll figure this out. Mike's probably 50-50. Mike's going to make a dumber decision than I am. And he's not here. Maybe if I was a medical doctor, he would call me. But I'm not. So he called medical doctors. So we just got to shift that mindset of I do everything, everything runs me to I'm a facilitator of other people doing everything and they run it and they're smart. And when you believe that, the people will believe that and you just have to trust that they can do it. And by the way, when you get good core values match people, it really does work out well. Shockingly few mistakes are made. But even if they are, if your expectation is perfection, well, you're not going to be perfect. So I'm guessing at some point in the past and certainly at some point in the future, Gerald will make something. I'm like, oh God, I wouldn't have done that. But because our core values, right, he's always trying to have fun, trying to make money, trying to help out, trying to be real. It would be an honest mistake, not like he lied or stole from a guy. Like anything would be like, holy shit, Jared, I got to fire you, man. It would be like, I would have gone this way a little and he went that way a little. And honestly, 50% of the time, his way was like, well, crap, this was this probably better mine. And the other half, it's like, well, maybe mine was better, but you got to crack a little bit of egg. So if your goal is perfection, you cannot run it from anywhere. But if your goal is effectiveness, scale, you can hire good people and just let them do their thing. And again, had Jared called me and be like, I don't know, call the freaking 911. What do you want from me? And Jared would be like, ah, you're right, but what am I, what am I doing? He would have moved on with his life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, amazing people. You may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast. We don't allow ads. The only ask that can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible. Literally, it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words. Now, back to the show. No, I think that, yeah, the the tackling of the, there's really two different mindsets that I see could really hinder someone working remote. And it's like, and I've seen these within our within our clientele. So one of them is like the guilt of being hands off. So some people feel like, oh man, I, you know, I, I, I want to, I, I feel like I'm not being a good boss because I'm not so involved with what I'm doing. And then that leads right into where a lot of people feel like they, they're the reason their cleaning business is successful without them, everything. So they're kind of the control side. I, yeah, I have a particular memory of meeting with a, a client that we, paid to come into the program, was in our program and, and was really adamant that what she was doing was correct. And when it was broken down, it was like, you're working a billion hours a week. And her answer was, well, if I don't, my cleaning company will suffer. And I feel like those two things, they have to be let go of when you go that remote direction. Well, it's even sadder when it's a client because she was amongst dozens of other people who were completely remote getting that result. So she had to almost take, and I'm, don't tell me your name. I don't want to know, but she had to leave Post on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. She had, yeah, exactly. Love whoever you are. We love you. We just want better life for you. And um, it was early. I don't, I, uh, late, I'm sure the mindset had changed. I just happened to meet with her early in her journey. Okay, as long as she got out of it, it's fine. But when you see other people living that life, then you really got to start bending reality, like their magic or their like, it's just, or just say, I'm not, I'm not going to deal with reality. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. What uh, What other fears? You're doing such a great job of kind of bringing up the fears in, that they would have if I can't do this. What What else we What else would we not cover uncovered? Well, one of the kind of the to pivot this question, I I once because that's kind of the negative or the man, this is tough about going remote. I got to let things go, and I think you are an example of that in that you're not micromanaging what you're doing. And so sure, not everything's done the exact way that you would have done it. But I think you've kind of internalized that I'm as long as I have the right people who are doing the right things that match the core values, we're moving in the right direction. It might not be my direction, 
but it's the right direction. Well, um, let me ask you a question if I may, because I've had this for Lindsay publicly, but I don't think I've asked you, and I don't think I've asked you privately. So we'll, myself and the audience will ask this together, and then I'll turn the podcast back over to you. Sure. Um, there are certainly ebbs and flows for both of us in the business. I know sometimes I probably work a lot harder than you, and I'm guessing sometimes you work a lot harder than me. I don't really know because I don't micromanage. You do a great job. And if you're like, Mike, I've been screwing this whole time. It only takes me an hour. I'm like, that doesn't affect me at all. Like, will you continue getting that result? You know, if you said it takes me 60 hours, I'd be like, okay, well, we got to That's not long-term okay. Um, so I don't really know nor care how long, I mean, as long as it's a reasonable amount of time, I'm not taking advantage of you. I don't really care how long it takes. There are times you're probably working much harder than I am for weeks, maybe even months at a time. Do you feel I'm taking advantage? I'm screwing you? Uh, you know, like the, the fears that they have, like, maybe, why don't you have, or do you have those? And if not, why not? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. One of the things I really love about the position that I'm in is that I'm given time to do my job well. I'm, it's clear what my job is. So I have the goals and what we're supposed to be doing. And I have room to improve my skill. And so there are times where I, I have to, I don't have time to improve my skill. All my time is being put into whatever fire or task or goal that we're trying to hit at that time. And then there's other times where it's like, hey, I'm hitting what I need to hit. So this means now I can improve what I'm doing so that, you know, we're involving business, we're growing. And, and there's never a month where it's just like, hey, we hit our goals. Great job. Let's just hit the same goal this next month. It's always let's grow, let's grow, let's grow, which requires me to be in a position that I'm growing and growing and growing. And so this job allows that. It allows me to do my job, but also allows me some time to be able to improve my skill. So what Jared just said from the owner's perspective is so you notice like every other human, including myself, he's just worried about his own thing. So we're like, oh, if I'm not first one there and last one out, they're going to see me and think I'm lazy. I directly asked him, how do you feel about how much I work? And he didn't respond because I'm assuming he doesn't care. He's like, all I care, are you doing your job? Like I'm with him. I don't care how long it takes. Are you, are you doing what I need you to do for the money we're exchanging? And the answer is yes. So God bless you. I think he's doing the same. Are my paychecks going to clear? Do we have a clear vision? Like, are we doing something that's helping other human? Like, does this meet my needs? And whether it takes me an hour or 60 hours a week, I think he's like, I don't really give a crap. That's Mike's problem because I'm the owner. So give yourself permission. That's why you have to set a vision. That's why you have to create a culture. Like that's what Jared's like. If he's like, everyone's fighting, there's a bunch of gossip. You're kind of a jerk. You know, I don't really like being here. Now he's going to have a problem with me. Even if I'm working 60 hours, he's still going to resent me. If I'm working one hour, but he's like, I love it here and I have fun and I'm able to flex my muscle. My paycheck always clears. And like, you know, gentle things like that is like, I didn't ever really think about what you're doing. So we get so concerned about what we think our employees are going to receive. They don't give a crap what we're doing. They're interested in what they're doing. Um, anything else on that? No, but I do have one more question. And yeah. do I have time to ask, ask that question? You got it quick. To, <laughs> you have time to ask it. I, I can't shut up. Do I have, will I go quick enough to answer? We'll see. Okay. So this is kind of a big, big picture question. So let's just say that we overcome those those hurdles, those mindsets, and we're able to be in a position that as a cleaning company, we are remote and working remotely. Are we able to expand or what does growth look like from a remote position compared to a locked in location? Such a great question. And honest to goodness, it's almost a prerequisite. So we're making a, the question is embedded with a, what I would say an unhelpful connection, the connection of the harder I, we, it's, and it's not the truth. Like if we go, so the connection we probably fear is I, the harder I work, the if I want to work, if I want my company to grow, I need to work harder. And it's like arguable. I would disagree. I think the quality of the work that you do and what you're focusing on and how well you work is a far lever, larger lever than the quantity. So, but generally more quantity equals more growth. Give you that. But then we make the assumption, and this is a crappy thing, like the thing I want to correct people the most on, they're still cleaning, is I'll say how many hours a week are you cleaning or how many, how many hours a week are you working in your business, working on your business? And they'll go, I'm cleaning 30 hours a week. Completely different answer to the question that I asked, right? Mm -hmm. So we make this assumption that first, when I'm cleaning, the more I clean, the better my business grows. And that might be true for the first 10 seconds. And then we get out of cleaning and go, okay, now I can do hard. We move from cleaning to managing. And then it's like, okay, the more managing I do, the better I can do. But that's not the truth. I don't know that it's not a matter of me like Jared needs more of me. He's probably had enough, like, like less sub weeks. But if I was like, all right, Jared, 40 hours a week, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to motivate. I'm your personal coach, motivating you. I'm going to be in the business. Let's go. 
it probably would make Jared less effective. Certainly less happy, probably less effective. <laughs> and maybe less present and dude might just leave. Um, <laughs> at least the room, if not the company. So we make this false association of the harder I'm working, the harder, the faster my business grows. And even if we accept that one, which I think is a partial truth, we then connect being in the office is working. And I'm like, no, I would literally leave my office to do the real work at a coffee shop down the road where nobody knew me and I could focus. When I went to work, I expected to get nothing done. So that would be the weekly meetings, monthly parties, of course. And I shouldn't say get nothing done. No project, no on the business project work, just the, on, the continuous caring and loving of the people. So as long as you're building the culture, which should, again, weekly meetings, monthly parties, quarterly reviews, that should take less than five hours a week. The rest of your time is working on the business and you'll be far more effective working on your business from anywhere but in your business. Did I answer your question? Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay. I think this is wonderful. And I think that as owners of cleaning companies, when we look at our business and what we truly want, I think that a lot of people want that freedom and they want the ability to not have a business that's drowning them. And so whether you have goals to working remote or just the ability to be really kind of hands off and have something that's running that you more come in and make tweaks to, as opposed to are just under the hood, oil dripping on your face, things exploding out of pipes, you don't know where they're coming from, but instead really feeling like you have a process and something that you can control and are a true business owner. I think this is what we would define as a true business owner. Uh, We've got tons and tons of resources for you. Um, one of, I think if you just go to growmycleaningcompany.com, you're going to, there's a masterclass there and, and something that could be really helpful for you in starting and growing this business that you have. Uh, Mike, do you have any parting words before we end the podcast? No, I just, one thing you said, I want to hit again, cause you said it so well, and then we'll, you can end it. Perfect. It's totally okay. If you don't want to run your business remotely, that's not the point. You want to be able to run your business remotely. Like Michael Gerber in the e talks about you don't have to franchise your business, but you certainly want to be able to franchise your business. Like I could just crank out these bad boys over and over, but I'm not going to franchise. I know, but every day you don't sell your business, you're the jerk buying it with your time and the equity in it. So if you're going to buy it, have to buy something worth owning. So I love what you said about for any of you are like, well, I don't want to run it remotely. Then don't, but you, you, I promise you want to be able to run it remotely. How you choose to do that free time, that's between you and God, but the ability, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, with that said, thank you, Mike, for joining my podcast and sharing your wisdom with us. And we will catch Cleaning Nation, you guys, next uh, next podcast. See ya. See ya. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share it with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.